always a pleasure to talk to the lovely team at the IHC Library. Phil, what's up this week? Well, I thought I'd continue the theme that I've been looking at different parts of the collection. And so uh, today I thought we'd look at the picture book collection. Everyone loves a good picture book. So what are some of your favourites that you've got? So we've got a pretty big collection, um, about 500 odd titles, and they are really focused on um, intellectual disability and some of the um, associated conditions that come with that. One of my favorites is a book called Why Johnny Doesn't Flap. And it's a, this is written from the point of view of uh, a boy with autism um, talking about his neurotypical friends and just saying, yeah, they have some odd quirky things that they do. You know, they, they don't turn it. When I say we're going to meet them at two, they don't always turn up at exactly two o'clock, but that's okay because they're neurotypical. <laughs> Actually, that's not okay. If you're going to turn up at two, if you say you're going to turn up at two, you turn up at two. Johnny's right, but um, yeah. oh no, Johnny's the one who, who doesn't flap, right? Yeah, that's right. Johnny is the one that doesn't flap. He's the friend. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. What a great thing to flip that around. Exactly. I mean, that's why I, that's why I love it, because it does flip things around and it just makes you think, yeah, actually, um, there is another side to the story. There's the view from the person with autism about, you know, other people. And you've got some other lovely titles um, there as well, some really interesting stuff around um, worries and fears. and Yeah, those emotions and feelings books go out the door, like, wildfire really there. I mean, they're, they're key topics for parents. Like we've got some books that are really factual, um, that talk about particular things in a very factual way, but with lovely illustrations. Then we've got ones that are, are fiction, you know, they're stories. And so stories can lead into, into other conversations and, you know, just a nice gentle way when you're with your child of kind of introducing ideas and saying, hey, you know, let's look at what uh, the panicosaurus is up to, you know, how come he's kind of panicking about this? And the other great thing about these resources is there's often a section at the back that has more information for parents or teachers. So there's, you know, as a parent, you can read through the resource and there's also some, maybe some activities or some uh, discussion points that you might want to follow up with. And the other thing is sometimes with picture books, it's not actually our families who would benefit from them. Sometimes you can use picture books to share information with the wider community and family, like schools, like teachers. And We have a lot of teachers who borrow um, from our collection generally, but they also really appreciate the picture book collection that we've got. And they'll borrow resources to use with their class. And they may also borrow, you know, a range of resources. And we really encourage them to do that, you know, several titles, have a look through, see which is good. And, and then you know, sometimes schools will think, yeah, this is a good one for us to have all the time. Um, and they'll go off and, and purchase it. But it's a really effective way of managing those school budgets. If you use our collection to have a look at the range of what's available before you hone in and buy it's really, it's sometimes quite difficult buying cold. If you go onto one of the book sites or, um, and, and try to choose things without really knowing what's in them. And I know anecdotally that some um, families are actually creating their own stories about their own family members and sharing them with classrooms and teachers, which seems like a really, a really good idea too. Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, um, these, these books are primarily, you know, they're US or UK. We've got a few titles that are Australian, New Zealand, uh, not a lot. So I think the benefit of creating something yourself is one, it's really, really focused on your child and how they are. Um, and also it's a New Zealand vernacular. So I think, yeah, there, there's potentially, if, if people are creating these resources, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a, a niche market for some, uh, for some of these to actually be published. It would be really great to think that we could get more New Zealand stories um, on these topics. Awesome, but in the meantime, a great place to start is with the good folk at the IHC Library and the incredible range of resources that you have. Thank you, Phil. No problem. Thank you, Fiona.